Hello, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101 with a change of scenery today where we will be spending some time outside experimenting with different size sensors. Let's get started. Every camera has a sensor. They all have the same job and purpose. However, today we are seeing how different sizes differ in the photographs that they capture. Today, we will be playing with the Sony A7 Mark II right over here on the tripod, a Sony A6300 with a crop sensor, and an Olympus Pen F that has a micro four thirds sensor. These sensors are the most common throughout all interchangeable lens cameras. Uh, let's start with what a sensor is. A sensor in technical terms is a sensor that takes in light waves and turns it into information, thus getting a photograph. Think of a sensor like the heart of your camera. When the lens is off, think of it as open heart surgery. When switching lenses, you wanna be swift and careful not to leave this open for very long. Uh, try and keep it faced away from the wind or downward to avoid dirt and dust from entering the camera. Don't go poking your finger around in there and don't touch it at all, or else your camera could be. If you damage your sensor, your camera is as good as gone. Which brings me to cleaning. If you get dirt or dust on your sensor, it's not the end of the world. If you see black spots on your pictures, take them to a camera store nearby and have it cleaned professionally. If you're seeing white spots on your pictures, you actually need to clean either the front or rear lens element. Um, which you can do yourself with a microfiber cloth and a specialized lens cleaning solution. When you do clean your lens, you want to actually mist the cloth, don't soak it, and never spray it on the front lens element. You'll want to start in the middle of the lens here and work in a circle outward to clean. If you have to do it a couple times, perfect. You're just going to do that until it's nice and clean. No more smudges, no more fingerprints. Starting with the Sony A7 Mark II, the full frame is gonna be the largest sensor out of the three, an equivalent to the 35 millimeter film size. I'll be using the 24 to 70 G Master lens. Uh, and we'll be using the 24 millimeter range for the video. One tip to remember with the lenses is that every lens will display the focal length for a full frame camera, even if the mount on the back is not meant for a full frame mount. We'll go over that a bit more later. The benefit of using a full frame camera is it's the best kind of camera for wide angle shots, low light conditions, and the ultimate bokeh effect. Bokeh is the blur or out of focus areas in a shot and the transition between sharp and blur for the foreground and background. This is perfect for landscapes, events, and portraits. As you can see with the 24 millimeter range on the full frame, we get a nice wide shot and a lot of details. Now let's compare to the Sony A6300, the crop sensor camera. I'll be using the kit lens uh, put to the 24 millimeter spot. Um, that way we can see how the 24 millimeter does in comparison to the full frame. The benefit of using a crop sensor over a full frame is it's the best all around camera for everyday activities and events, easy to use layout for the hobbyist or a professional traveling with a second body, and great for wildlife because as you're about to see, Using the same focal length as the full frame, it crops in at 1.5 times the millimeter size. So what would be a 24 millimeter size on the full frame, we're actually seeing an equivalent to a 36 millimeter size on the crop sensor. And even though we're getting a cropped image as compared to the full frame, it does not mean that we are getting less quality in our photographs. However, it does mean that by getting more distance out of our lenses, we are also getting less light availability because now we are working with a smaller sensor. So what do Micro Four Third sensors bring to the table? Olympus and Panasonic cameras with these sensors are perfect for travelers as they have even lighter packages than a crop sensor. Olympus cameras specifically have a classic design um, while Panasonic has more of a modern design. They share the same lens mount and they crop in at two times, giving you even more reach uh, in a smaller package. So because Panasonic nor Olympus has a 24 millimeter lens, we will be using the Olympus 25 millimeter lens to show the crop, making the lens a 50 millimeter. Now, just like the crop sensor to the full frame, you will be granted more distance out of your lenses. However, you will get, be giving something up in return. Because these cameras have a high ISO availability to compensate for low light, that really isn't going to be an issue. The issue you will lack is bokeh, that blur effect that we discussed earlier. 
As you can see, the same photo at the same equivalent millimeter size at the same aperture setting, you get more bokeh on the full frame than you do for the micro four thirds. If you are a landscape shooter, a traveler that wants a small package with a far reach, or even a videographer, these cameras are the best option for you. I hope this has helped give you a visual on how sensors work and what size is targeted for your photography goals. Until next time, keep your eyes open for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.